What's going on YouTube is Donnie B all day and I'm bringing you a requested video something that I'm actually pretty happy that was requested because this video has got two of the best knives on the planet in a head-to-head -head matchup. We have the Cold Steel 1917 Frontier Bowie and we have the Down Under um, Outback Eclipse Bowie. Right, which is the same as the Outback buoy, just with some uh, darker uh, fittings instead of some lighter fittings. Um, now this one, I did a little modification on. This one, I did not. So the review is going to go around the, uh, the modifications made. But first, let's go over statistics. Um, let's start with the Down Under buoy, since I have it in my hand right now. <laughs> gorgeous so this thing is just as pretty as a blade as you could ever ask for now it came with the leather wrap handle all the way through and it cut up really sharply right here and then went down into a brass pommel um now what happens is the tang ends right around here right it's it's a three-quarter tang the, um, and it's got a rat tail about this long at the end that screws on the pommel and holds on the leather. But um, what happens is when people damage these, it's generally they damage that little piece of rat tail that sticks off of there. And it's, and it's usually whenever we do it, it's our own fault. Um, it's this right here doesn't damage. This right here doesn't damage. It's always this little area right here because you have a rat tail welded on to the end of the tang. Um, not the best designs. I hate rat tails, but some knives you just got to have rat tail or not. Um, but what I did is I bent mine and, um, rather than bend it back, what I did is I just snapped the whole thing off with some pliers and then I took some zebra wood and I made my own handle and I did a decorative pin with, um, a hanger. Took the twisty part of the hanger, boop, made a pin. Those of you who've seen it, you know it. So um, when it comes to grip comfortability, um, I have to go by what it feels like now. And if I say what it feels like now, it's different than when it was brand new. Brand new, this was cut shorter, so it was less comfortable. Um, so let me just real quick. And then this one, the handle is exactly how it was. And it's pretty, pretty damn comfortable. Um, brand new for brand new, this one, the, the Frontier Bowie by Cold Steel, it was more comfortable um, brand new than this one was. Since the modification, though, um, I have to say that this is more comfortable than this. I do have a finger swell at the end, so you don't lose it. This one has a natural finger swell and this finger swell. Even though I hated the look of the squared off um, handle butt, I have to say it works really, really well. And I have come to um, love this knife with that look on the end. It just, it, it just fits the hand in so many good ways. But uh, all in all, as far as comfort now, this one is more comfortable. Brand spanking new, the cold steel is more comfortable. All right, so let's get into specs. Uh, this one, 1095 high carbon. I'm looking even though I already know that. Um, the Rockwell hardness is 5859. Um, the blade length is 11 inches. Mm, Vanna White style. Um, the uh, total length is 16. The handle was five. It's a little bit longer now. I made it for me. Um, the blade thickness is six freaking millimeters. Um, and the weight is 800 grams. All right. So that's the specs on that one. Let's get into the specs on this one. Okay. We are looking at a quarter inch blade length, right? Um, we have 1085 high carbon. Now there's a lot of confusion uh, confusion where people think that it's not 1085 because they were making them in, I think it was 
1075 or 1055, one of the two. I think it was 1075. Um, but they updated their steel in 2018, and they are making these now in 1085, so it is better than it was. Um, so when you buy one of these, you're getting a really good steel. Um, a really good steel, not a really good steel. Um, so the rosewood handle is 5 and 3 eighths. Um, the blade length is 12 and a quarter. Uh, the overall is 17 and 5 eighths. Um, let's see. Oh, and the weight is 23.8 ounces. Now, this one retails for about 200. This one retails for about 250. Um, going from the blade, you could really see the length, the very, very small differences in size. The differences in, um, shape are just going to be where you get a thicker belly here. Um, but... Outside of that, you have a choil here and a big ricasso here, um, so you can you can do uh, finger work on both. Both are swedge. This one has a deeper swedge. Um, both have fullers. This one has a, has deeper fullers. Um, they are both fantastic. Both come with a hand guard. This one has a fighting knife hand guard. This one has a working buoy hand guard. Um, both are great. Both can be wielded as fighting knives so no matter what both of them can be used um for self-defense purposes and that's what large buoys originally were made for they were made to do your kitchen prep your wood chop your freaking defensive blades everything that's what big buoys are made for these are both workhorses um this one obviously has a black coating that is crazy strong stays on very well this thing is pretty old now i've had it for a while i've used it a bunch i just have some oil on there but the coating still looks fantastic this one there's no flaws in the blade except where i scratched it on accident um and i could take down the scratches by sanding and then try and sand and then sand and then sand and then sand to get it and then buff it out but it already looks beautiful just with a couple scratches that just says hey man this thing is used um and that's i use them um, as far as banging them around and, um, being able to use them as giant knives, you can bang these things around all day long. I have never, never had an issue outside of bending the rat tail. Um, once the rat tail is gone, this thing is fan freaking tastic. So, um, uh, let's get into, uh, let's get into the sheaths. The sheaths, which one's better? Um, I don't know if you can say which one's better, which one's worse. Um, they're both really, really good sheaths. This one is leather with like this faux gator style print, this crocodile dundee guy. Um, and it, it's a really good, it does have the cross strap in the front, which I prefer them in the back because they scratch up eventually by deploying your blade. Um, but... Um, that's where the handguard is only in the front. So in the back, it wouldn't hold on to anything. Now it sits in there doo -doo -doo -doo, really well. It's pretty much a friction hold. I have, let me see if I could do a little bouncing and see if it's going to fall out. And it is, it is a good friction hold. So honestly, I don't need the strap. I could literally do away with the strap and just carry it for quick deploy no problem. And um, that's exactly what the uh, the other one is. There's no strap. So who knows? Maybe someday I'll get rid of it if, if it's bothering me. Um, but as far as this is concerned, it's not necessary. It's just extra precaution. One thing I love about this is right here. It comes with the sharpening steel um, and it works. It's a good steel, but uh, it's just really, really handy to have because that way I don't have to carry anything extra, no attachments, nothing in a bag, um, or I don't have to find a big rock outside that's nice and smooth and work that. Um, that said, both of these edges I've been using and neither have I had to sharpen yet. So I'm still in a pretty good standing there. Uh, the little faux, faux gator teeth that comes with it, I, don't, I mean, there's some kind of bone. It's a real bone, but it's not a tooth. Um, but they're just like the Crocodile Dundee hat ones, you know what I mean? And they, they were on his blade. Um, and it actually came with another 
can't remember where it was. It was on, on here somewhere, but it came with another strap. And I think it was on the end of the blade, um, but it was just getting in the way. So I took them off. This one right here is fine because I use it to help pull out my my uh, rod if I need to. Um, so far, the only thing I've... Did you hear my voice go away? Um, the, only, the only reason I've had to pull this out so far was just to show it. And I used it to sharpen a different knife. So that's that sheath. This one is a really cool sheath. Very, very well made. Um, it's leather. You can definitely see how much less real estate it takes up. Um, it's narrow. It works. You have the metal end right here, this cap. And then you have the removable frog, which is right here. You take that off. And then you slide this down and you can take this off completely. And you can put your knife either in the, in the frog itself or you can use it for a sword or machete or anything like that. And then you can use this to tuck into your gear. And that way you have two sheaths instead of one sheath. But I use the sheath as it is. Now this one is like a quasi dangler. It dangles, but it doesn't dangle away. Um, this strap stays right on there. And that's good for um, if you're using it as a sword holder, if you're using the frog as a sword holder, that works out pretty well. Um, as far as do I think one sheath is better than the other sheath. Um, this is one of those cases where they're both great different. This one's got a really nice thin design um, and it can be have multiple uses. This one's a little bit wider but it's really cool looking and it does have a sharpener attached to it. So I mean really you're looking at just two great sheaths. I don't know. So it comes down to choice. This one not eclipsed um, comes brown um, and not eclipsed. It's a different steel. It's not 1095. It's 440, I think, C. I believe that's what I want to say. But this one is 1095. So it's a little bit more close to, re to relate to this. Now, um, as far as looks, um, it's kind of hard to beat this look, but I mean, it's also kind of hard to beat this look. These two blades, I mean, are both pretty intimidating blades if you're to pull one of these out it really doesn't matter which one somebody's gonna go oh snap um they they both are really comfortable um this one has the choil which i love but the upper hand guard takes away your your complete and uh, uh, ease of use on the choil because the choil is here you want to be able to put your hand in it and you have this hand guard right there so what i have to do is put my hand on the choil then put my thumb around it so I'm not getting the exact angles I want. You know what I mean? I can do it this way and wrap my finger around there and then I can get a good angle. But it would just be a little bit easier without this top hand guard. But um, then you take away the purpose of a fighting knife that was made to stop your hands from getting cut off by something else. Um, as far as different holds on this one, not having this upper hand guard, man, that makes it so easy to grab onto for um, extra work you can do a side grip to do pulls on this one very easily you can do a side grip on here but not from here you have to go way up on the blade um, luckily that fuller is awesome so um which one is better that's that's the thing which one if if you could only buy one which one would you buy that's near impossible um, to tell you which one, let me tell you, if you have the extra 50 bucks, you know what I mean? And, and you, you might, you don't mind spending the under 50 bucks, get this one. If you, if you're stuck on price, get this one. Um, this one's 1095. This one's 1085. The steels are very, very close. Um, this one is six millimeters. I believe quarter inch. I think that's five millimeters or 5.5 somewhere in there. So you're getting a thick blade no matter what. Maybe you don't like one that's shiny. Maybe you want one that's black. Maybe you don't like black. Maybe you want one that's shiny. Um, and it really comes down to what you're using it for. All out camp knife where you're going to be doing any kind of large knife bushcrafting. Um, just not having that upper hand guard is going to make this one more of a delight. If you want a straight up fighting buoy, this one is going to be your guy right here. Um, and also keep in mind that this one comes with a, a weakness out of the box. The rat tail is a weakness if you use it wrong. The only reason I bent mine was because I'm a genius and I threw the knife and it hit sideways on a round object. So this bent, right? 
if I didn't throw it, I would have never, never damaged that. Just using it as regular, regular workhorse, regular workload, I, I don't think I would have damaged it. The only way you could ever damage it is if you're holding on to the original end way at the end, and then you're using it to baton or something like that. But you'd really have to be holding it way back here before you damage the knife by, uh, by using it in that manner. Um, this one, there's no weakness. There's no area of concern coming off of this. Um, and if you have a quarter inch of ability to put on your own end, then being able to buy one of these and modify it yourself makes it just, I mean, now I have no worries. You know what I mean? Now this is going to be a flawless blade. I'm not going to, you know, I got what you, what I did is I took off the wood. It was a big square, lined it up, made my hole. Um, I drilled into it just for the tang to go through, slid it on there with some JB weld, put in my pin with some JB weld. That thing is not coming off. That is solid, solid, solid. And I'm able to manipulate the shape I want to fit my hand. You see that nice shape it's got going in there. I was able to make it higher up here to fit the pinky better. Um, I made it swell out here. So I have that nice grip. Everything I did, and then I just burnt it to give it a good look. But everything I did was for my level of comfort. So everything fits my hand exactly on this one. And I really enjoy that. This one just comes with a great fit out of the box. Um, but if, if you're willing to knock off some of your leather and replace it and pin it, um, then you'll have a knife that you have no worries with. Um, or if you buy this thing straight up and you use it like the knife is made to be used um, and not throwing it into crap like I do, then you really don't have to worry about that either. The only thing I would say is it's going to be, you know, cut out a little bit more here. So if you have bigger hands, it's going to be less comfortable. Smaller hands, it might work out for you. So that's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a couple snippets of these guys that in work and then we'll take them outside and we'll do a side-by-side -side, um, chop challenge so hold on so I know we started out right here with this uh, we're gonna start where well, we're gonna start right here with this uh, outback buoy right the down under little water bottles uh, swat and go man that thing was just freaking clean 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 hold on now all right moving on to some vacuum cleaner hose I mean the the way it cut the vacuum cleaner hose it was literally like chopping celery you know just cutting a, a fruit or a vegetable and it was just so damn easy let's see here we moved on to the to the big nylon rope now getting a balance for a push cut is pretty tough but this thing i mean the sharpness it speaks for itself it's just freaking sharp all right, so I got out to the pines and I just started chopping stuff. And I'll tell you, the down under outback buoy and, and the eclipse is the one I have, the eclipse. It's just menacing, menacing. It's sharp, it's strong, it's big, it's weighted right. Everything about this knife is just awesome. The only thing that wasn't awesome and, and it was my own fault was the rat tail. Change that up real quick, bada boom, bada bing everything turned out different i mean i was just having so much fun playing with this knife making paper thin curls doing whatever i wanted it to just an awesome freaking blade hold on a second hold on a second it looks like looks like old donnie b all day is getting ready to make some some feather sticking let's see let's see if we can't get a little close up there Ooh -wee. yeah the, the blade and this is what i was talking about with that side grip guys it's so easy to hold on to. It's so easy to get all that tight little work with just because of the shape of the blade, the shape of the spine, and how the spine comes into the top of the uh, top of the handle. Just makes it so easy. Chopping, slicing, dicing, it does it all. So I was doing some uh, I was doing some batoning and this and that. And on this piece of wood, I was literally just trying to hammer it down into that piece of tree but it was working i was chopping chopping wood all day with this thing it was just um just really fun to use man it was a, a fun piece and i remember at one point i held up a log and uh i let it go 
and just chop this thing straight through. It was just crazy, man. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Hold on. I think, I think we're about to see something. So just a couple little taps to get it started. And uh, this blade, this blade goes through really, really nicely. Yada, 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 showing you that the tree is bouncing. So it makes it a little harder to go through, but it just, that was wet pine. And it was just no problem. The blade was getting icky, sticky, gooey, gummy. And um, it just kept on going. It just kept on going. No matter what I put this thing through, it was, uh, it was just making it look like child's play. You know what I mean? Like I was hitting toy wood. That's what it felt like. So this is where my dumbass bent it. And this is what you don't do with a big, large buoy. You see how that hit? It hit sideways. And immediately I grabbed it and I'm like, something feels different. I bent the freaking rat tail. Maybe that was the one. I don't know. But on one of those throws, I know you're not supposed to hit a rat tail. Yeah, and yeah, that's where that's exactly where it happened. So to think that the, the knife is going to get hurt, it's not. You just don't do stupid things like that. All right, so now on to the Frontier buoy. I didn't have a water bottle in hand, but I did have a big gallon of milk filtered water. Look at that. Come back and do it again. Come back and here it is. Showed you. Come back, do it again. The thing is an absolute killer. So I was whacking away at a pallet, giving it some chopping. And look at how fast. I mean, how fast this thing was just tearing it up. So this one, I got a little crazy with the vacuum cleaner hose. And I was just like, boop. And every time. Ta-da. So I'll tell you, man. The thing the thing is just one of those, one of those knives that it's not just going to do what you want it to. But it's going to do what you want it to. And it's going to do it easily. And you're going to have so much freaking fun swinging this thing around. I mean... Look at this. Too freaking easy. So here is where I was demonstrating the side grip on this thing. And you really have to choke up to um, to get a side grip going. And I, I just took off a piece that was so thin you could see through it. I just got my finger in the way. Um, but literally, you can, you can kind of see the difference. Look how far the handle is up on my forearm. Because I have to choke way up on the blade to get a proper side grip. Um, is it going to work? Well, you be the judge. Yeah, it's going to work. It's going to do the job all day, every day, but you really do have to choke up on this one to, to get it to feel right. Let's do a couple, a couple downward chops, making spear tips, things like that. Just awesome. We're going to get outside real quick and we're going to go. All right. might be hard to hear me because it's a little windy, but, um, we are going to take these two and start chopping into one of these big guys over here. Let's first, we'll get rid of, uh, We'll get rid of this. That's just sitting here. And I'll take that down. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. I mean, just easy. Ugh. Easy. Ugh. Easy to get through this stuff. Just so easy. It just decimates whatever you swing it at. And uh, I like that. I like that. So um, let's find us which one we want to take down. We're going to take down this one right here. It's a big guy. So let's see. Whoa. So now it's really simple to swing. I'm a lefty swinging the out back of my right hand gives me no problems because it just wants to swing and you can see the depth that each chop gets when it comes down it's they literally just sink and want to fight right into the wood and uh it's a joy chopping with these things this guy's gonna come down pretty soon Huh. 
Which way is that going to blow down? Probably right on my dome because I'm that kind of lucky. I'm waiting. <laughs> it's going to crash on my head. Hold on. We'll go from the other side. I'm going to switch hands. We'll give you both swings, both hands. Jiminy Christmas! Um, easy. It's just so easy to use these guys. Um, no matter what, put a knife in there, hit it with another knife. Oh! That was gonna say it won't even fall out because I got so much bite, but I hit it into a, uh, I hit it into a pre-existing chop hole. There we go. Oh. There we go. <laughs> All right, so, I mean, so much fun. So much fun wielding these big guys. So you can look at the edges. You can look at the edges. These things, they're both made to go. Um, if it came down to, you can only have one, just one. Um, knowing that I'm in the woods a lot, I would have to say I'm keeping the Outback. Is Even though, you know, if it came to a point where if it was sold and they said, you can't modify it no matter what happens, well then I'm keeping this. But with the ability to do a simple modification that anybody can do, um, this thing becomes incredible. Uh, this one right here, I mean, it just comes incredible. The only thing is this piece right here is the only small hindrance on the entire knife, but it makes up part of what the knife is, the nostalgia of it. You know what I mean? If, if you said, okay, you can only have one and it's going to be a fighting knife and you have to defend yourself against other knife wielders, well, give me the 1917 Frontier buoy. But if you're saying you gotta go live in the woods for a year and only have one knife to do it with out of these two, well, I'm taking I'm taking the down under. I mean, it's I'd like to say it's not even a question, but I mean they're both they're both just awesome. And um, so it's not like oh yeah it's such an easy decision. No, it is, this thing is um, this thing is badass. This thing is badass. Um, not having to decide which one I would want to keep is so, so nice. To be able to say, nope, I get to have them both forever makes me very, very happy. Um, they're just both great. Um, and they're great for, for each in their own way, right? But um, they can both, this thing can be used as a fighter only. This thing can be used as a camp knife only. This is a better camp knife. This is a better fighting knife. Um, but neither of them are lacking in any of those departments. I'm just thinking about what I would need it for me, just for me. Um, which one would I need to be my forever blade? And I would choose the Outback, even with the rat tail at the end, just because I know that it's easy to fix. It's so simple to, to get rid of that. So, um, you know what I mean? You're, it's a little bit more expensive. Um, but if you're looking for a woodsman's knife, this is it right here. Uh, it's just it's just awesome. If you're saying, yeah, but it is $50 more expensive, well, <laughs> you're not getting any less of a knife, I'll tell you that. This guy right here is amazing. It is amazing. This is literally one of my favorite knives on the planet. So to say, oh, I would choose this one over it, believe me, it, it's, it, it's a very, very minor reason why. You know what I mean? There, there's not like... Oh yeah, because of this and this and this and this. No, it's it's a very very minor reason why I would choose this one, but that's what you have. So that's just my opinion. You guys might feel different, but um, I hope this answers some of those questions. And uh, you know, between the 1917 Frontier Buoy by Cold Steel and the Down Under Outback Eclipse, um, I I just couldn't be happier. And I have to say, if it was the Down Under, not Eclipse, if it was the regular Down Under and the uh, stainless steel then I, I think I would probably choose this one. 
The Eclipse is 1095, and I just have a really, really strong love for it. And um, I trust the steel. I know the steel. So out of those two, um, who knows? If it was just the regular Outback, I would probably choose this one. That's how, that's how really close these guys are. Um, both fantastic. If you have the chance to get both, get both. Add them to your collection. Love them. Parent them. Raise them as your own. Give them a home. So that's about it, guys. Awesome freaking knives. Awesome freaking knives. I'm Donnie B. All day. And until next knife. Wow.